today I'll teach you the perfect jump or at least the closest that I can get to it. What do you think is the most important part? Have a look at the following clips. What do I mean when I say the perfect jump? The perfect jump is largely depending on the conditions that you have available to you. If you have 40 knots of wind out there and perfect kickers, your perfect jump might be 30 meters high, which is about 90 feet. But if you only have 15 knots of wind, which I would say is a very light wind session, then your perfect jump might only be 5 meters high or 15 feet. So the perfect jump is all about maximizing your height with the conditions that you have available to you. And this is going to be a journey that can last forever. I've been kiting for over 15 years and I'm still perfecting my jumps and the timing of which I take off. So what are the most important parts when we're talking about the jump? The kite plays a very big role in the timing that you get off the water. And next to that, you have the board and the edging and the carving. Personally, I think that the board is the most important part and the most overlooked part when we look at jumps. If you are not carving upwind, you are not going to go up. So let's have a look at these sections one by one and we'll start off with the kite. Right in with medium to high speed on a crosswind course with your kite at 45 degrees. Steer your kite up towards 12 and start carving towards the wind. Take off just before the kite reaches 12 by pulling down the bar. Steer the kite towards 11.30 where you can park it until you reach the apex of your jump. It's very important that you keep the bar down during the entire jump so the kite doesn't fly behind you. Redirect your kite towards the riding side just before you land. Usually I redirect at a height of 2 meters above the water. Point your board downwind on the landing and dive the kite down in the wind window to ride away with speed. You can carve back towards a cross or upwind course and continue riding. Your jump timing is very important. You want to be taking off just before the kite hits 12 because that's where it's going to create the most lift. And that's what you can also see in this particular jump that I take off just before the kite hits 12. The same actually goes for your landing. If you're going to come down for your landing, you want to be redirecting your kite just before you land so it passes 12 and gives you a lot of lift and puts you down softly. I usually say redirect the kite when you're about 2 meters off the water. So let's talk about the four most common mistakes I see people doing out there when trying to jump. First of all, taking off too late. And this is a very big one. Your kite generates the most power when it passes 12, so it's very important that you use that. If you take off too late, you've wasted all that power and you're not going to go up at all. Number two, and this is a myth I, or something I hear a lot, and that is, yeah, just set, put, park your kite really low and send it to the other side. Yes, it is going to get you up, but you're going to be launched forward. And that's not very comfortable, especially not for your landing, as your kite's actually going to be way behind you when you land and you're going to fall out of the sky. Number three, a lot of people, they actually steer their kite backwards and forwards in their jump. Yes, this can be really cool if you're doing a high jump, as you can see in this video, because it gives you a massive launch forward. But if you start doing it on smaller jumps, the kite's gonna be quite far in front of you and this is going to make the landing very tricky as it generates forward speed. So my suggestion, just steer it from one side to the other, park it, at 12.30 or 11.30 and redirect it for your way back down. Number four, this is a bad edge, but first of all, we're gonna have a closer look at what you should do with your board and then I'll tell you the common mistakes I see with a bad edge. Right in with medium to high speed on a crosswind course. Start carving towards the wind after you steer your kite up towards 12. Take off on a 45 degree angle towards the wind and push hard to jump. Keep the bar pulled down for the entire jump for maximum lift. If your kite backstalls, you should depower using the trim adjuster. 
redirect your kite pause 12 just before you land and make sure that the board is underneath you and not in front. Point your board downwind for a soft landing and follow the power of the kite. Carve back towards a cross or upwind course and continue riding. Before we start with the key points of the board, I just want to talk a moment about edging and carving. For me, edging is when you put your board on an edge. Uh, when you press your heels into the water and pull your toes up, your board is going to slice through the water. Carving for me is when you carve your board into the wind, so when you make a turn into the wind. And this is usually best done when your board is on an edge. If you don't edge while carving, most likely you're going to slide out. So now that you know that, let's talk about the key points. It's very important that you edge and carve into the wind just before you take off. If you don't um, divert your crosswind speed into upwind, you're not gonna get as much lift as you can. So you really wanna edge and carve into the wind and take off on a 45 degree angle towards the wind. This is going to give you the maximum jump height. Once you're coming down for your landing, something I often see is that people don't point their board downwind and they're gonna slide and jump down. So you really wanna point that board downwind in the direction that you're going for a smooth landing. Let's look at this example video just to see how important it is that you edge into the wind. On the one side, you'll see that I actually carve and edge upwind nicely before the jump. And on the other one, I'm just keeping my board flat and letting the kite do all the work. If you let the kite do all the work, you're definitely not gonna reach the right height. So therefore, most common mistake I see when people are riding out there is not carving into the wind. And I think this is where you're going to find the most progress in your jump height. The next topic might sound a little bit stupid, but it is a very important one. What happens if I jump too high? My answer is really simple. Just stick to the plan. Don't start doing anything you haven't done before. Just stick to the plan, keep your kite on the side, wait till you reach the apex, wait till you go down, and just before you're landing, you're going to redirect your kite. If you keep that and keep those timings, you're gonna, going to have somewhat of a soft landing and not crash down. If all of a sudden you start steering your kite, your landing will be a lot harder than you're used to, and that might scare you off a little bit. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, give me the thumbs up. Give me a comment if you have any questions. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.